Oh, and obey him. <laughs> okay, obey is a strong word. <laughs> I submit, but obey is a whole other issue. That's a whole other level to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the I have with me Jacqueline Holness. She's an author, blogger, Christian, and an expert on relationship. She has a brand new book out. Brand new book. Destination Wedding. And uh, Jacqueline, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it. How did you come up with the idea of this book? It's a very interesting title, Destination Wedding. Well, first of all, I love, love romantic love specifically. But this uh, idea for this book came to me um, about 10 years ago in December. I was a single black woman in Atlanta and my, a relationship that I had just ended. So I was upset about that. And then I saw a report on ABC News Nightline that said 42% of black women weren't getting married. And it was, uh, sec it was uh, twice the, the amount of white women that were in that same predicament. And they focused uh, specifically on women, black women in Atlanta. And at the time I was very insulted by the report, but the report uh, proved to be um, an inspiration for this novel, which is based on fictional black women who see this report. Right on. Um, and why were you upset about the report? It, uh, it's a true report. Why were you upset about it? Uh, because it just seemed to be focusing in on black women. It made me feel like we were uh, pitied by other people, that we uh, could not find men, uh, that there weren't enough black men or men in particular that wanted black women. It just made me feel some kind of way. <laughs> what, <laughs> what is wrong with black women that they are not getting married? I noticed that a lot, of, a lot of black women are not getting married, especially today, and, and especially those who are educated. It seems as though the black man will look outside of the race to find a wife rather than within the race. Why is that? I can't say that there's something wrong with black women. You know, you would think by these reports that that is true. I think there's some larger issues that affect uh, the suitability of, of black men sometimes as marriage partners. Uh, black men are more incarcerated than other uh, men are, so that affects our marriage pool. A lot of times black men aren't given the same opportunities as other men. And so that affects, uh, you know, their financial stability. And so that puts, uh, you know, you don't want to necessarily marry someone that's going to bring you down. You want to be brought up. And so that affects uh, our, our marriage pool. There are some issues that black women can take ownership of. That's true. But I also think that there are some larger issues that affect the black community, uh, specifically men, that makes marriage sometimes hard for the educated black woman. What type of issues that black women need to uh, take issue with or, or work out about themselves? Well, I'll, I'll, sh I'll give myself an example. Um, for instance, uh, my father is a very uh, educated man, uh, you know, various degrees, uh, you know, the whole nine. And so I always had in my mind that I was going to marry someone just like him. And, you know, education is important. I believe in being educated, but the person doesn't have to exactly match who your father is. They can have some traits of your father, but they don't exactly have to match. So, um, so I took that into account and not to say that I settled because some would see it as that, but to say that there are more things that make a man other than having 10 degrees, because you can have an educated fool, as I've encountered many times. I have been, I work with a lot of men and around the world, really. And a lot of black men tell me that they would not marry an educated black woman because black women already have attitudes. And when they become educated, they're even worse. You know, standards uh, is not an attitude. <laughs> You know, and some people confuse having standards with having an attitude. I think everyone should have standards. And so, you know, I can understand. And, 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 and to be fair, there are some people who have attitudes, right? Black men and black women. But I think if you have standards, you have standards of fidelity. You have standards of 
uh, reaching your potential. I don't know if that qualifies as having an attitude. And I think sometimes people uh, misconstrue having standards as uh, having an attitude. Are you saying that most, not all, not all, not all, not all, not all, but most black women don't have attitudes? You know what? Some black women have attitudes, but some people have attitudes. You know, um, I think, you know, just bring it back to me personally. I think sometimes when you feel insecure about certain things that you can't control, in some cases that can force you to have an attitude. Like for instance, um, the fact that black men have been so adversely affected by societal issues that it puts black women sometimes in a position that they would rather not be in. And that is feeling like they have to uh, really, really, really search for a partner suitable for them. And so that can, that can cause you to have uh, an attitude on some days. So are you saying that most black women don't have attitudes? You know, uh, Reverend uh, Peterson, I can't say most about anything. I would say of my friends, some of us do have attitudes, but all of us don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, su I suggest that, I just suggest that men, period, don't marry women with degrees, so-called educated women, because— are you, are you serious? Right, because they don't make for good wives and mothers. Really? Okay, why do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> because of the order of God, you know, God in Christ, Christ over man, man over woman, and woman over God. I mean, God over Christ, Christ over man, man over woman, woman over children. And when you marry an educated woman, she feels that she is God, and she's not going to want to operate in her proper role. And, and men get married because they want a family. They want that order. But educated women, and especially black women, will not operate in that role. Okay, well, I'm going to share something with you just to be completely transparent. Um, you know, my husband has said to me, uh, you know, you are like a wild horse. You know, it's not going to tame you. So, I, you know, and I think when you have lived on your own for years, yes, um, I do think it's harder for you to uh, be in a submissive, you know, type of relationship. And, um, but that can be learned. You know, because I do feel in a marriage that the husband is the head and the wife should submit to the husband. I think it's mutual submission, but I do think there has to be a leader of the home. And my husband is the leader. Now, I give him some flack. I do. But I think I uh, <laughs> push him to be better. I, I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so your wife, I mean, your husband is the head of you? He is, you know, it's a learning process. We've only been married now for six years. Um, and I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning, you know, it, it's a process. And I, I take a lot of lessons from my mother. My parents have been married for over 40 years. Um, and so I, I talk with my mother and I watch other women and I, you know, and I try to emulate what uh, I think would make a happy marriage and a happy home. Do you have kids? No, I don't. Oh, uh, and would you suggest you, you and your husband have kids before you fall in that order? Or should he wait until you submit to him and obey him? <laughs> okay, <laughs> obey is a strong word. <laughs> I submit, but obey is a whole other issue. That's a whole other level to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the answer to your question is, I don't think I have to wait you know, to have children before I, you know, get myself in line, you know, if that, no, I think my mother is a very strong willed woman, right? Yeah. Very strong willed, but she is, uh, she submits to my father and is an excellent wife and mother and has been for years. So I think I have a good example of being strong willed and at the same time knowing my position, if that makes sense. Okay. And so you don't like the word obey. Mm -hmm. Why don't you like that word? You know, it just it just makes me think of slave and slave master. I can't, you know, I can't be down with the, you know, whatever you like. You know, I'm not down with that. You know, that to me makes me feel like I don't have a mind. But I will say this, because my husband and I are both Christians and we pray together on a regular basis, I trust that as the man that he's hearing from God and I trust that I'm hearing from God as well. And I think God speaks to us according to our roles. Uh, I noticed that most black men, not all, not all, not all, 
that most black men today are like their mothers. They're angry. They're emotional. They act like the woman. How did that happen? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily true. They act like their mothers. Yeah, they have anger. And every man that has, has anger is a woman. Why is it that so many men, especially in the black community, act like their mothers? And they are controlled by their mothers as well. My husband is not like that at all. Um, my husband, our personalities work well together. Um, I'm emotional and he's emotional. And I... Your husband is emotional? I'm emotional and he's emotional. Well, a woman, it's natural for a woman to be emotional, but unnatural for a man. Well, how do you handle your husband being emotional? Well, he's not emotional where he's like tearing up on every occasion at everything. He's emotional in that he's passionate about his beliefs. You know, we like, we are very, um, we're, we, we both have passionate ideas. And so I like that, you know, he's not bowing down to me. I'm not bowing down to him. We're equal in the sense of we both, uh, have equal ideas. Do you, does he tell you his weaknesses? Does he tell you his problems or he just deal with that himself without letting you know? He shares his problems, and I share mine with him. That's not good. A woman can't handle a man's problems. Do you agree with me that a man should never, ever, ever, ever tell a woman his weakness? I think that would lead to dysfunction. I mean, you want a whole person. I know, you know, but a woman can't do anything about her own weaknesses. She need a man to help her to overcome. How can she handle a man's weakness when she can't handle her own? Reverend, with all respect, you can, can call me Jesse. <laughs> then what now? I can handle my weaknesses, you know. So you know, I know <laughs> all about my weaknesses. Do you know I, how to overcome your weaknesses? I have learned. You know, I've I've, I've had. You know, I, I have. I've had weaknesses, and I think I can overcome them. And I think I am overcoming them in in the name of God, in the name of Jesus. I am. It would be like Jesus telling a human being his weaknesses. Uh, telling another man when a man tell a woman because women are very judgmental and as soon they'll say oh you don't tell me your problems how was your day you never tell me you don't love me and as soon as the man t and she, the man is like no everything's fine all is well you don't love me you never tell me right and as soon as the man tells her she judged him for life 50 years go by she still remember it that's immature. I don't do that at all. I but mean, most women do that, right? Uh, I don't. I can't say most women do it. I know I don't do it because I look at men and women as people. Yes, we are male and female, but we're people. But you agree that the man is over the woman, right? Yes. And so why would the head? Why would the head of the woman tell the weak investor about his problems? She can't handle them. <laughs> Weaker in terms of physical strength, but not weaker in terms of mental strength. No, that's not true. Women are very emotional, mentally, I mean, yeah, mentally and physically emotion. And the man, emotional, and the man has to help her overcome that. That's the whole purpose, is to bring her out of that hell she's in. But if he goes into the hell with her, it's just going to be held in the home. I'm not in hell. You know, I'm not <laughs> in hell at all. I, I'm I'm a strong-minded woman. And There's no I'm, such thing as a strong woman. Weak men, but not strong women. Um, my my husband is strong, and I'm strong, and so and but we also have weaknesses. Nobody is all strength, and nobody is all weak. Really? It's uh, a do I notice that a lot of black men are married outside of their race? As I mentioned earlier, they're married with white women, and they're Japanese and Chinese. Should a black man go outside of his race and marry another kind of woman? If he desires. I mean, but a black woman can do the same thing. Marry outside of a race? Yeah. If, if, that's, if that's who, that's what God ordained for you specifically. Now, if you only pursue people outside of your race, then there's an issue. But if you genuinely fall in love with someone that is not of your race, then, you know, I have no problem with that. Um. It create a problem with the children, though, because they don't fit in. They don't know if they should fit in with the blacks or the whites. And the blacks hate the white people so much that they wouldn't want the children to identify with the whites. You know, I have 
I know I have some bi biracial friends and, you know, I have heard about some difficulties with identifying with um, one race or another. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think every child is going to have struggles, every person. So if it's not that, it'll be something else. You know, somebody being teased for some other issue, you know. So if they if the adults didn't mix, marry, that would be one struggle that the kids would never have to deal with, right? Why bring that on knowing that it's going to be a problem? I think you have to look at that as an individual and, and weigh the cost of, you know, what you think could happen. I'm Like I said, there are some people I know that have those issues, but there are some that don't, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, should, a, should men be in touch with their feminine side? Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, you don't need to be a woman to be in touch with your feminine side. It makes you a whole person. When you say be in touch with it, what do you mean? Um, when I say, say be in touch with your feelings, I mean to not be um, separated from your feelings. You know, some men think that they have to always keep it together and they end up being crazy. You know, to be a whole person is to be connected to all of your feelings. I, I noticed that men that are in touch with their feelings go crazy because it's those emotions that drive you crazy. But those men who overcome the emotion, which is the nature of their mothers, they are not crazy. They, they tend to be logical, uh, independent men because they overcome the emotions because emotions drive you nuts. Uh, well, I think you should have command of your emotions, whether you're a woman or a man, because certain situations call for you to have command of your emotions. But at the same time, you have to be in touch with your emotions because uh, otherwise you would be going to see a, a therapist at some point. <laughs> What is uh, racial reconciliation? Okay. Racial reconciliation, um, that's, to me, it's when different races uh, come together despite the things that have brought us apart. Why do most black people hate white people so much and white people have nothing to do with their issues, but the blacks blame them? Why is that? Why do black people hate white people? Yeah, most black people hate white people, and they, they're always crying racism. They're always crying slavery. And most black people know nothing about slavery. They know nothing about Jim Crow. And they're failing in life, and they're blaming the whites for it. Why is that? Well, for me, I don't hate white people. Right, I, that's why I said most, not all, not all, but most. So, number one, I don't hate uh, white people, but I understand, um, and you know, my family, we're first generation American, uh -huh. I'm a first generation American. Um, and so I've heard stories, you know, with my parents growing up in a predominantly black society, um, they came in as outsiders to the American experience. Where did they come from? Jamaica. Oh, okay. So they have been able to see things um, that maybe some black Americans would not see. But, um, and I guess I'm saying that to say that in spite of all of the history that this country has had, a lot of good has come to my parents because of their relationships with white people. Right. So, um, but on the other hand, uh, you know, you don't have to look very far back to see how slavery and things and, and racism has affected the average black person in this country. So I can understand having some feelings, um, some uncomfortable feelings, maybe even leading to hate in some situations, depending on what has happened in your particular life. I grew up on a plantation. I was born there in Alabama and under the Jim Crow laws. And um, none of that stuff uh, affected me or, uh, or any of my family members. How come it skipped over blacks during the Jim Crow era? And then the blacks after that are so affected by it, but the blacks who grew up under that, uh, during those laws, had no problem with it. I think you're making a blanket statement because I know black people who did grow up under Jim Crow that have issues. So I think you're making, if that's not true for you, that's fine. But I know that there are a lot of black people that have had a different experience. Jacqueline, tell folks how to get your book. Uh, well, you can get Destination Wedding. And let me show you the book right here. You can get Destination Wedding on any of your online retailers, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, 
um, Books a Million, all of the various websites, Target. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Reverend. I wish you well with the book. Thank you. All right. 888-7753-773. That was Jacqueline Ho uh, Honus. And the book is Destination Wedding. Check it out, folks. Amazing.